Hi, my name is Kevin Smith. I'm an Agilent Applications Engineer. This is part three of my Agilent Logic Analyzer Basics video series. Uh, we're going to take a look at a few uh, basic advanced features. Um, the first video I showed how to set up your Logic Analyzer and acquire data. Third video we took a look at some basic analysis features. Uh, third video here we're going to take a look at uh, a couple of semi-advanced but more or less standard uh, standard features on the logic analyzer. Um, the first thing we want to do um, is, is we, we, most of these features are going to live under the tools window. Okay? Um, and one that I like is the filter colorize tool. Okay? And in this tool you can it basically automatically pops in between these two got between the analyzer module and the, uh, the, the analysis windows uh, but you can delete these connections or add them to new windows and basically all this tool does is it colors or hides or shows very specifically a particular bus signal okay um, value we can do you know the various bits or all bits and let's just do a simple FF. Okay, and of course I can change that base to whatever I like. And if I click OK, I've previously acquired some data. Now if I go to my waveform window, well, it found FF and it made it red for me. That's pretty straightforward. We'll see the same thing in the listing window. All these values are FFs. Now again, why do we see so many FFs because we're in timing mode and so we have many many samples on the same bit. Going back to the, um, the overview window I want to uh, delete this tool. Now I'm going to add a <clears throat> um, we're going to go to the window and we're going to go to the new compare tool now the compare tool is very, very, very powerful. Um, really, only applies to the listing window, however. And with the um, compare tool, what we want to do is we, let's say we capture our golden trace. We simply copy the trace. It can be um, a single bit or an entire bus. We add it. Click OK. Wait for it to do its thing and load that into memory. This is all done in hardware. All right. Now, we see that uh, we have the uh, golden trace in gold. This is still the same trace. And if we do a run, now, of course, my dot is spitting out the same data over and over and over again. So I'm going to get the same results. But anything that would be different, oh, here we did, in fact, find one. Timing modes, we found a small difference here. Um, FD to FE, FD to FC. Okay, it did highlight these differences for us, and that is the point of this tool. There are a lot of um, capabilities in here. Um, we can do it only from a certain marker range and so forth, or we can run uh, compare until something happens. Um, you can even have it send an email. Um, properties, 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 colors. Um, uh, alignments so there's a lot of uh, flexibility here okay and yeah here we go and we can jump around as well and we can see some more differences that we found and it jumps pretty much to the next difference with these buttons all right so that's a that's a very useful tool it works with the uh, that filter colorize tool that we talked about. Now, we can also add um, uh, various other tools such as packet decoder, signal extractor, and serial to parallel. Um, these are uh, licensed options, which means there is a model number and cost associated with them. Um, they're all s packet decoder and signal extractor are somewhat similar. Not going to go into those differences. Um, B4641A and uh, B4602A 
are those two guys. Serial to parallel tool is B4601C. And basically, if we have a serial data stream as opposed to a parallel bit stream, um, it will take that and put it into a more logic analyzer friendly display. Logic analyzer is optimized for many parallel data streams. So uh, to do serial, we really need to do um, <clears throat> we really need to use this tool. Um, and you can see that we're only gonna, it's only really going to do one bit at a time. Um, how many bits do you want the output? MSB first, LSB first. Um, we can do if it's framed data, we can turn that on. And there is also clock recovery. Um, for clock recovery, we basically need to tell it um, uh, what what a bit width is, um, various data encodings, and um, we really, if we're going to use clock recovery, we need to be sampled at at least four uh, x the data rate. Enough of that. Um, <clears throat> okay, the one last thing I want to show us here is there's a bunch of different ways to set this up, but probably um, one of the quickest ways, in my opinion, to get there is um, if we go to the waveform window and we go to symbols. So symbols is, an, is a relatively easy way and free way to have the logic analyzer do some basic decoding for you. In this case, <clears throat> we need to tell it to load a symbol file, which can be a simple CSV file. This, this hex value, this ASCII value, this whatever, decodes to um, some uh, human readable value. For example, um, FF, uh, FF might simply uh, mean write, and you have to create a CSV file for that. Um, all this documentation and all the documentation for the logic analyzer can essentially um, be found under the help menu. And there is uh, quite a bit of um, uh, detail in here, user-defined symbols, loaded symbols list, and so forth. And as I said, this is a real basic video, and that concludes this video. The, uh, the next video in this series is correlating a logic analyzer capture with a scope capture. Thank you for your attention.